Hello, Namaskar, and welcome to Bank Exams today. So, I welcome you all to today's session on this topic problem on trains. So, this topic is equally important for each and every exam, be it insurance sector or banking exam, be it claims or means. So, any written exam for banking and insurance sector, this topic is very much important for that. So, we'll see uh, how we apply the basic concepts uh, to the questions, to solve the questions, and how we're going to set the approach to solve these kinds of questions on this topic. And also, we'll solve some, uh, solve some questions also in this session. Okay, before starting the session, let me just introduce you to the new course that we have launched here for SBI SO marketing. So our team at Banks Exams today, we are offering a full-fledged comp and a comprehensive course for the preparation of this exam. And also this course will contain video classes for all the sections along with complete study material provided in the PDF format. So you can all access all this material uh, on two devices. Whenever you purchase the batch, you are given login credential. Using those credentials, you can uh, access the uh, access all this material on the website, uh, on the website, and also on one mobile app also. Okay. Now, uh, along with these features, a test series will also be provided, which will contain ten full length tests with chapter wise tests also. So you can see what are the weaker areas that you need to work upon so that you can uh, later on improve that and gain some marks. Okay, and a systematic study plan will also be provided along with interview preparation guidance for all those students who will clear the written exams. And also you can use this coupon code LK10 to avail 10% discount on the course phase. So what are you waiting for? Hurry up and avail this offer. Now let's start with the session here. The first question here on screen. A local train can travel 20% faster than Rohit's car. Now, Somesh is traveling by that local train. So let's just say that the speed of car, speed of car is S kilometers per hour. Speed of car is S kilometers per hour. So according to statement, speed of train should be 20% more than that or 1.2 times S. Now both the uh, both the train and the car start from Delhi at the same time and reach the destination 40 kilometers away at the same time. Now you see the distance to be covered for both train and car. The distance be, uh, distance to be covered is 40 kilometers. That is same for both the both the train and car. Right? And speed of train is much faster than speed of car. Now, speed is equal to distance over time. Speed is inversely proportional to time. So, according to this logic, if the speed of train is more than that of car and they both of them has, have to cover the same distance, so obviously speed, uh, the train should take lesser time than that of car. But statement says they are reaching the destination at the same time. So, the speed... Um, what I am saying that logically the time taken by train should be lesser than that of car, but it is equal to car. So some time that some time is being added to the time taken of speed, uh, time taken of train, right? For that, the reason is also given that on the way, however, the local train lost 3.33 minutes while stopping at the stations. So speed is distance over time. Time is distance. Uh, time is distance over speed. So if the train is running with the speed 1.2s covering 40 kilometers, so time taken should be this and this should be lesser than the time taken by Rohit's car, right? But since it is equal, so it means uh, some time, uh, some time uh, duration is also added and that is the time lost by train due to stopping at station that is 3.33 minutes. If I add it here, 3.33 minutes, so that will be equal to the time taken by the car 40 over s so i can say 40 over s minus 40 over 1.2 s it should be equal to 3.33 minutes to convert it into hours i'll divide it by 60 because i have to keep the same dimensions like uh if everything uh, like speed I'm taking I'm taking in kilometers per hour, distance I'm taking in kilometers, so I'll take time in hours, right? So now we can solve it for uh, taking 40 common and 1 by s minus 1 uh, minus 1 upon 1 1.2 s divided by 10 point, uh, 3.33. I can write it like uh, 10 divided by 3 then by 60, 
right? So 40 and 1.2 minus 1. So it is 0.2s divided by sorry 0.2 divided by 1.2s is equals to 1 upon 18. Right? So now points get cancelled out. 2, 6 is 12 and 6, 3 is 18. Right? So s is equal to 40 into 3. That is 120. So speed of car is 120 kilometers per hour. Clear? I hope you have understood this question. Let's move to another question. A cop sees a thief fleeing at a distance of 132 meter and starts chasing him. Now train of length 240 meter running in the opposite direction as that of thief and the cop and the cop as well. It The train crosses the thief and the cop in 12 seconds and police in 10 seconds. So here police, uh, you know, it, it is in the reference to cop as well. Cop only. Now how many seconds after spotting the thief will cop <clears throat> the thief will after spotting the thief will the cop catch the thief. Okay. So now cop and thief they are a distance they are at a distance of 132 meter at this present instance now a uh, train is going to cross them one by one right so now train and thief they are running towards each other they are running towards each other and so their relative speed will be there right and they are running towards each other in the in the uh, in the uh, in opposite direction, right? And the train crosses the thief in twelve seconds. So relative speed should be equal to distance covered and by the train and the uh, and the time taken to to cross the thief. Distance covered while crossing the thief should be equal to the uh, to the length of the train. Now train length is two forty meters and time taken is twelve seconds. So it will be equal to twenty meters per second. Now, since we are talking about relative speed, so relative speed in this case will be equal to speed of speed of train plus speed of thief because they are since they are moving in opposite direction, so relative speed will get added. This their uh, their individual speeds will get added to get the relative speed. Okay, so it is equal to twenty meters per second. Similarly, you can see that in the case of when train will cross the cop, when train will cross, uh, cross the cop, so in that case also train and cop are moving in opposite direction and train will cover the distance of 240 meters and it crosses the police in 10, in 10 seconds. So relative speed will be equal to 24 meter per second. Now, if I say this is equation number one, this is equation number two. So subtracting one from two, so we'll get uh, speed, relative speed of cop minus thief. So this, it will be equal to four meter per second. Now, since the distance between cop and thief is right now is 132 meter and speed we have got four meter per second. So time taken will be equal to 132 distance divided by speed that is four. Now we'll get it in 33 seconds. So this is your answer. Clear? Now let's move on to the next question. A train traveled from Delhi to Kasoli and back in a certain time at a rate of 50 kilometers per hour. Now if the train had traveled from Delhi to Kasoli at the rate of 100 kilometers and back to Kasoli at 50 kilometers per hour, so it would have saved two hours the whole journey. So find the distance between Delhi and Kasoli. Now, the, according to the statement, Delhi, the train is starting from Delhi, goes till Kasoli, and then moving moves back to Delhi again. In the first case, in both the segments, the train was moving with 50 kilometers per hour only in both the journeys, right? In the forward and in the backward as well. Now, if the train had moved from Delhi to Kosoli at the rate of 100 kilometers per hour, 100 kilometers per hour, and from Kosoli back to Delhi at the same speed, 
that is 50 kilometers per hour only. The train would have saved total two hours in the journey. Now you see here, the distance between Delhi to Kasoli is X and Kasoli to Delhi will also be X. So they are covering the same distance, right? If you see that this segment, this Kasoli to Delhi segment, this Kasoli to Delhi segment, So this Kosoli to Delhi segment, the distance covered in both the cases, in the first and in the second case as well, the distance covered is same. They are they both are traveling with the same speed. So obviously the time taken by the train in both the cases to cover this much segment only only Kosoli to Delhi will also be same. So there will be no time difference in both the cases if we consider only this Kosoli to Delhi segment. But if we see Delhi to Kosoli, the, there is a difference of speed. So the time difference that we can that we are seeing here that that is here because of this segment only this Delhi to Kosoli segment, right? So this segment is only causing the time difference of two hours. I hope you you have understood it here, right? So this segment is responsible for two hours time difference. Now you can see here if I say S one is the speed while moving from Delhi to Kosoli in case one, and S2 is the speed in the second case, then we'll see this segment Delhi to Kosoli, right? The distance is same in both the cases, right? So speed must be inversely proportional to time. Now you see here S1 over S2 is 50 over 100 kilometers. So that is one ratio to so obviously we can see here the T2 over T1 will be equal to 2 ratio 1. So obviously we are seeing that there is a there is a decrease in time taken, right? <clears throat> so uh, I could have saved 2 kilometers. So 50 over 100, 50 kilometers over 100. So that is 1 ratio 2. So T2 over T1 is 2 ratio 1. That we can see here the T1 uh, that the T2 <clears> over <throat> T1. Oh, sorry, there is an error. T2 over T1 will be equal to 1 over 2. Right? The same ratio if, we, if I have taken the reciprocal hint. So, T2 over T1 is 1 ratio 2. You can see here the time taken in the second case is lesser and the time taken in first case is larger. Okay, so now difference you can see here the difference is equal to 1 unit difference here is one unit and that is equal to two hours right so t1 is equal to two units so that is four hours now in the first condition the train from delhi to kosoli moving at 50 kilometers per hour right and they move for four hours so distance will be equal to 200 kilometers so this is your answer Clear? So I hope I, you have understood this question. Okay, now let's move to the next question. The average speed of a train is 60% less on the return journey than on the onward journey. Okay, the train halts for an hour for, uh, at the destination station before, the st before starting on the return journey. And if the total time time taken for to and fro means total time for whole journey for uh, for moving forward and then moving backward, okay, it is forty one hours. Then covering a distance of two thousand kilometers means forward journey is always also two thousand kilometers and backward journey is also two thousand kilometers. Return journey is also two thousand kilometers. And find the speed of the train on the return journey. Okay, so let's just try a linear diagram here. We are starting from A. And it moves towards B, right? And let's just say that it takes T1 time here, right? And the speed is now uh, X kilometers per hour. Now it takes a halt. It takes a halt. It halts for an hour, one hour here, one hour halt. And then it starts the return journey from B to A. From B to A. Let's just say the time taken here is T2 and 
Now speed in the return journey is 60% less. So I can say now the speed is 0.4 X kilometers per hour. Right? The total time taken in the journey is 41 hours. So T1 plus T2 plus one more hour in the halt, right? It is equal to 41 hours. So in short, T1 plus T2 should be equal to 40 hours. So now T1 here is, I can say, uh, the total distance is 2000 kilometers in a single in a single journey so 2000 kilometers divided by x plus 2000 by 0.4x is equal to 40 okay so if i remove the point so it will be uh, one more zero added to 2000 so i can say it is equal to 5000 divided by x. So, in short, total 7000 <clears throat> divided by x is equals to 40. Right? So, 4, 700 divided by 4, x is 700 divided by 4. So, it is equal to 175 so now x is equal to 175 kilometers per hour now we are we have been asked the speed of the train in the return journey so in return journey speed in the return journey speed the required speed it is equal to 0 0.4 into x that is 175 so 0.4 means 175 multiplied by 2 upon 5 so it is equal to 175 divided by 5 that is 35 multiplied by 2 it is 70 kilometers per hour clear so i hope you have understood this question let's move on to the next one speed of a train engine is 180 kilometers per hour when no compartment is attached so when compartments are attached, the speed gets reduced in direct proportion to the square root of the number of compartments attached. Now the speed of the train carried by this engine is 60 km per hour with 16 compartments attached and 40% of the seats are reserved for ladies. Right? Now find the maximum number of seats that can be reserved for ladies if total number of seats in one compartment is 100. In short, we need to find out how many maximum how many maximum number of compartments you can add. Right. For that, the let's just move to the first line. It says speed of a train engine is 180 kilometers, and when no compartments are attached, and when compartments are attached, the speed gets reduced in direct proportion to square root of the number of compartments. So I can say the reduction in speed, the reduction in speed. It is directly proportional to num to the square of number of compartments. This is he's trying to say. This is he trying to say. So now, or I can say reduction is equal to k is a constant. If I take k as a constant, k multiplied by square root of number of components. This is the actual meaning of directly proportionality, right? So now he says that starting from 180, starting from 180, when no compartments are attached, the speed gets reduced to 60 kilometers per hour when 16 compartments are attached. Right. So the reduction, one, the, the reduction, uh, the reduction that we had to do from 180, it should be equal to 60. From 180, it gets reduced to 60, and the reduction is equal to k multiplied by number of compartments. So number of compartments when there are 16 compartments. So the total reduction will be this k multiplied by under root 16. And when one it, it is reduced from 180, it should be equal to 60. Now we'll solve it. So k under root 16, 16 is equals to is equal to 80 minus 180 minus 60 that is 120. So k into 4 is equals to 120 and k is equals to 30. Now he's asking how many maximum number of uh, ladies, uh, ladies uh, seats can be reserved for ladies. 
be 40%. So in short, he is saying that in one compartment, there are total 100 seats. So ladies, seats reserved for ladies will be equal to 40% of that. That is 40 seats will be reserved in one compartment. Now, since the reduction in speed is directly proportional to number of compartments, so we'll see how many compartments can we attach to the train so that train doesn't stop, doesn't stand, uh, doesn't get stopped. Even when, I mean to say, bilkul zero par na jai. Bilkul uski speed zero na ho jai. To we kaam karenge, pehle hum kya karenge? <coughs> pehle hum uh, karenge ki is pe dek lenge ki kons kitne compartments add kare taaki speed zero ho jai. Fir usse ek compartment kam kar denge. That's it. Hai na? Usse ek compartment kam kar denge. Fir usse saar se seats nikal lenge. Right? So 180 minus reduction. So we'll say it is equal to reduction will be K multiplied by square root of number of compartments. So let's just say it is X. It should be equal to zero. Okay, the reduced speed is zero. So now we have found the value of K. It is equal to 30. So 30 root X is equals to 180 root x is equals to 6 so x is equals to 36 now if we add 36 compartments this train uh, this train will not move the speed of the train will become zero right but we need to move the train so we'll take one less compartment that is 35 so number of compartments we can add is 35 only Right. And number of in, in one compartment, there are 40, 40 seats for ladies. So in the total number of seats that can be reserved is equal to 40 multiplied by 35. So that is 1400. So this is your answer. Clear? So I hope you have understood these questions and you have understood the concept as well. Right. So if you have any question, any, any query in the, um, in, in this session in the question you can ask it and it will be resolved okay so in the previous year in the previous sessions also we have uh, we have run this batch and we have so many success stories to tell like in ibps rrb scale to gbo and scale the for 2020 right in 2019 as well uh, we have seen so many uh, so many faces in our success stories and for other exams like bank of india credit officer and for vijay bank credit officer for bank of india credit officer bob wealth management so we we run many courses and we have seen a lot of faces your face could be the next so what are you waiting for if you if you have liked the content you can always uh, purchase the batch and you can all you can also avail the discount as well using that coupon code see you in the next session till then take care bye bye keep studying